John 15 is the farewell discourse, a series of speeches and prayers given by Jesus during the Last Supper. In our text, Jesus is using the imagery of a vineyard to describe the new relationship which the disciples are about to enjoy with him and the Father. I am the real vine and my father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit. Our Lord is the vine. Unbelievers are the fruitless branches and believers are the fruit-bearing branches. The grapes are the fruit which God produces through his saints and believers as they draw their life and their strength from the vine the Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father is the gardener who tends the vine, removing and destroying unfruitful branches, purifying the living branch. Jesus speaks of himself as the true vine. Now, believers, specifically the disciples, were the branches who were a part of the vine. And like us, the disciples must stay connected to the true vine. They must remain connected for their strength. Jesus is distinguishing himself as the true vine because he is trying to separate himself from faithless Israel who was caught up in the motions and the show of religion but truly did not understand and believe. Jesus brought forth the true fruit that Israel failed to produce. Jesus warns his disciples and he warns us that we must remain connected in him. This is even more important today as we socially distance during this pandemic. We can become spiritually fatigued, spiritually isolated. Jesus makes clear here that apart from him, none of us can do or accomplish anything. We can't bear spiritual fruits. The vine is our source of spiritual nourishment. His word is our nutrition. Separating us from the vine means that we are spiritually starved and eventually spiritually dead. Connected, however, we are continuously fed God's word and we are bearing fruit to the glory of God. Jesus now explains what he has just said about abiding in him. First, when we abide in Christ, we are abiding in his love. John's account here demonstrates that Jesus is now speaking of abiding in him as abiding in his love. Our Lord's love for his disciples is like the Father's, God's love for Jesus. God sent his son to Calvary out of his love for his son as well as out of his love for lost sinners. Two, when we abide in Christ, we keep his commandments. Jesus never acted independent of his father. His actions were always focused on how could he glorify his father in heaven. He sought to stay constantly connected and grow closer to his father, closer than a teenager to their cell phone. What he is saying to us is we must abide in him and abide in his love, which means that we will keep his commandments. Three, when we abide in Christ, we love our brother. While the word of the Lord makes it clear that we are to keep his commandments, at this moment, Jesus is giving his disciples but one commandment. They must love one another just as he has loved them. In some ways, this one commandment encompasses all the other commandments in that if one loves the other person, he will keep all those other commandments. Four, when we abide in Christ, we have great joy. Now, joy is a prominent theme in this lesson, and this is a time when you don't expect joy to be a preeminent thought. Remember, Jesus 
had just told his disciples some distressing things. Their hearts were heavy. If the disciples would abide in him, however, their sorrows would be dispelled and replaced with joy. Not only would the joy of the Lord be in them, but their joy would be full. Their hearts would overflow with joy. Finally, when we abide in Christ, we are his friend. Jesus tells his disciples that they are no longer slaves, but rather friends. Jesus speaks of a change which is about to take place in his relationship with his disciples. We will no longer deal with them as slaves or as students, but rather we will have an intimate friend relationship. Now, a slave is expected to do what his master instructs. Students are expected to do what the teacher instructs of them. But friends are motivated and connected through love, and therefore they're acting not out of a sense of obligation, but rather acting out of a deep and abiding love. Jesus reminds his disciples that they are special, that he selected them, not the reverse. He reminds them that love is the most powerful weapon in their arsenal and commands them to love one another because that force of love connects all of us still and makes us glorify our Father who is in heaven. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week. Bye.